boys! Batten down the hatches! We might have to bust out that, that little boat, float our way inside. Anyway guys, what is going on? Good afternoon. It is Friday afternoon. Finally Friday, people, right? So, we are in the garage. I don't even know what the heck we're going to get done today, but it is raining cats and dogs. It has been raining super hard for the last couple hours. So, the plans of continue to work on the first gen are definitely not going to happen. Hopefully tomorrow looks like a better schedule. But I did promise you that we're going to go over the fuel and the air setup that we currently are going to be running on the first gen uh, with all the other mods that I kind of showed you guys yesterday. So let's get right into that. First off today, we did stop by and see our buddy, Mr. Snap-on Ryan, who of course gave us catalogs that we can look through and, you know, look at tools that we can't afford and don't need but want anyway but anyway maybe we'll go read those later this is this this is good this is good toilet material right here let me tell you but we also did go and get some hole saws for uh cutting our intercooler piping holes through the uh, front grill support um i actually did order this is the gear pump puller for the front nut there that is actually technically the correct cummins uh puller so i ordered that also, they had these Cummins wrenches, which I think is what our custom, uh, where's our custom job here? Look at, let's, let's compare these bends here real quick. Come on. You know, pretty similar, pretty similar. But anyway, I ordered these just for the heck of it. I think this is actually for adjusting uh, some of the stuff that's hard to do on the VE pump, I believe. So I ordered those just for the heck of it. They weren't really all that much money with <clears throat> Snap on Ryan's discount. But anyway, we got those, got the gear puller. We might actually try and maybe disassemble the rest of the stuff off of there tonight, seeing that the rain is inhibiting our work schedule outside. So. Without further ado, here is some of the more parts for the, some of the more parts. I, I, anyway, so Steed Speed T4 manifold, if you guys do not know, Steed Speed makes, literally makes the sexiest dang manifolds for these Cummins engines and some other stuff. They actually make stuff for other uh, applications now as well, but big Cummins manifolds, people, these things are just if it would ever focus just a complete complete work of art these things are insanely cool awesome and good looking they also give you manifold gaskets and this is important some people um maybe they'll i don't know if they'll have it in our other kit here let's let's just double check here so i can show you comparison wise let's open up our cummins exhaust manifold uh Maybe not. I thought it was one. Maybe that's not it. Okay, here's... All right, so here is your Cummins stamped... This is a T3, but you can see... Maybe you can't. This is a single-layer MLS exhaust manifold gasket. Now, the one that you get, and I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, man, that's awesome. This is a multi-layered... All right, so there you can see it. This is actually a multi-layer... Uh, steel exhaust manifold gasket, which is really good. These are the nice gaskets, and same thing goes for the ones on the, um, the I'm sorry, that is the turbo to manifold, and these are the uh, cylinder head to manifold gasket. These are also their multi-layer ones, which are nice. They seal way better. These are much higher quality than just your normal one stamp design so keep that in mind if you're looking for gaskets and you see some pricing is a little bit different make sure you get the ones that are multi-layer those are the really good ones so those are the ones that i've had better luck with anyway also in their kit give you the studs to go to your turbo and they also give you the necessary hardware which is very nice as well something that i didn't show you guys besides the actual beautiful manifold the awesome hardware and all the other necessary things you need is just the way this thing is packaged from the second that it comes in you know that you are getting something awesome they mount it to a piece of plywood um, just very secure so top to bottom just a top notch 
always experienced with Steed Speed, so go check them out if you're in the market for a manifold. Just so you guys know, all of the parts uh, besides some of the uh, head gasket stuff kit that I mentioned yesterday all comes from Garofalo Enterprises So his information and phone number if you want to bother him is always down in the description I get all of my parts from him through him that steed speed manifold was ordered less than a week ago So if you need steed speeds anything else injectors, I mean anything top to bottom I can guarantee you you're gonna get the best service and best pricing from him so go check him out now speaking of our man Mikey G we are gonna to get to our turbo Turbonetics. Now, I usually keep this thing inside because I, you guys can't tell, obviously, but the humidity in this garage right now, especially right now, is just through the roof. I am just sweating like crazy. But he had this beast laying around. Hard to believe. Totally rebuilt, totally brand new. Back when the pulling rules were a little different, this turbo was kind of built to meet uh, 2.8 rules. Kind of a kind of a very funky setup. It's got a little bit of a smaller backside to it, uh, which I think it's going to work good for the first gen. So this is actually uh, what would be considered like a 472, um, and it's got a little bit of a smaller turbine wheel, um, and, it, and it's kind of like a little bit not outdated, but it, it's an older uh, of a turbo. But it was laying around. And I basically begged and pleaded that we needed to see that on the first gen. So uh, I think I convinced him enough. So uh, we appreciate that very, very much. So again, go check him out. But Turbonetics Turbocharger, and it is a six blade, which is going to make this thing scream. So it should be really loud. Now, next up, coming from our man, you've heard me mention him before with some of the other awesome billet parts we've got going on like the Killer Dow pin. Our man Lance from Thin Air Diesel has got a set up with a set of big ol' injectors. Now, these are a 58 liter per minute rated injector which basically equivalates to roughly around a 200 horse. They are uh, like a 5 by 18 injector. So, they are set up for the VE pumps. There's the, the pop-off pressures are for a VE setup. Um, and those things are going to be badass. I'm telling you right now. So, we, we got our hands on some power here, boys. So, we got a 72 millimeter compressor charger, uh, some big sticks, nice manifold so we are going to be set up to make a decent decent amount of power i i hope anyway now the ve pump is still not turned up we are going to do that as well that's in the plans to handle all this stuff now we're going to have some weak links here and some of the weak links we already know is the transmission so that is why my plans for building uh the transmission are what they are so uh, we got that in, in the works. So I'm actually going to show you a little sneak peek from our man John Muldoon down at Muldoon's Diesel. He's already posting on his Instagram about some of the parts that we got. Now, let me, let me dive into that a little bit. So the stubby output uh, kit that we got is from Suncoast. So Suncoast kind of heard about the brand Wrenchworks and they kind of came up on their own without even telling me or John. They kind of made something special for the truck and, and I just couldn't be more pumped to actually see this thing in person. Uh, I'm super grateful for uh, this, what they what they did. Um, but let me just show you without further ado. All right, we're on our man John Muldoon, Muldoon's Instagram story feed. Let's go through here. Look at that, you see that? Let's play it again. Sun Coast. Wrench works! So again, we'll go over with John exactly everything about that, but huge shout out to Sun Coast. Thank you guys so much. That That is just blowing my mind awesome so that is cool i think that's like an output piece uh that holds everything you know obviously with their their stubby output kit for those two wheel drives 48 so that's going to be awesome it, it looks insane it, it's so cool mind blowing again to have that that's for them to do that for me thank you guys so much i really do appreciate that i'm telling you it is really hot in here man Woo! 
Alrighty guys, so uh, John actually, Mr. our man, Mr. John Sendit, actually just posted this on Instagram, so I feel like uh, it's it's applicable to say here now. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking where John has been. We need more videos with John in it. Uh, for those of you guys who don't really follow him on uh, Instagram, and a lot of people were asking where he was at the call-out challenge. So, uh, as you guys probably know, uh, we were working on everything here late uh, Saturday night. So, Sunday was the call-out challenge. So, uh, basically, Sunday morning came and John was riding his motorcycle because all of his vehicles were uh, in incapacitated. So, he was riding his motorcycle and uh, something happened. Uh, he doesn't even remember what happened and he's really actually lucky to be alive. He thinks that uh, somebody or something, animal, something hopped in front of him. He lost control of his bike. He doesn't remember anything. Uh, he landed up in the woods and his headlight of his bike just so happens, I'm, I'm like getting goosebumps even just telling you this, but the headlight of his motorcycle uh, ended up facing towards the road. And he just so happens to live by a, uh, a, a police station. A police drove by and saw the light flashing on the road. And that's the only reason they stopped. And he left so early that it was still dark out. So you could actually see a headlight beam in the middle of the road. And the cop stopped and, and heard him moaning in the woods. And uh, it was like 6.30, 7 o'clock. And I didn't know what to do because John is never ever late anywhere and he didn't show up at my house uh, we We're supposed to meet at 6 30 nothing seven o'clock nothing. Um, so so my brother uh, Nick was driving and Jesse was driving so I you know We made came up with the plan like hey like start backtracking all the way to John's house uh, to see if you can find something uh, they ended up getting a hold of the cop and, and finding all this out um, so that is where in a nutshell John has been John had to have surgery on his back. He blew out, blew out two vertebrae in his back. Uh, he bruised his ribs, cracked some, cracked some ribs and kidneys and lungs. I mean, it, it was not a light matter by any means. He, he got really banged up. But uh, good news is now he's feeling better. Uh, he doesn't need physical therapy. He doesn't think there goes the fire firehouse um so he's doing a lot better so if you don't follow him you know go follow him on instagram uh send him you know just 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 reply to his he doesn't probably need to he probably has a million messages but you know right on his last post you, you know to say feel better whatever but he'll be back we will be going over there shortly he's just starting to get around and start moving again uh so john's not going anywhere don't worry um a lot of you guys were worried about that but he got into you know a little bit of a you know thing if you want to call it that so he's okay you know guys just just you never know you never know you know if you guys got into a fight with somebody you never know when the last time you're gonna see somebody when the last time you're gonna tell them that they that they that you love them um, you know don't take one second for granted in this life you know tell people that you love them just you know you gotta you gotta think and you can't think like this all the time but you just never know what could happen to somebody life can life can change like that for good and, and for and for the worst so just just know that and, and you know that you got i mean you know you know so anyway so glad that john is okay um that sunday was was a little rough before we knew uh what it actually you know that he was you know gonna be okay so uh that's where John's been in a nutshell, not to bring not to bring the mood down, but he's okay, he's good. You know, when I went to go see him in the hospital, he was still cracking jokes at the uh, the nurses and the and the doctors and stuff. So, if John has his humor, he he'll be okay. So, uh he's he's good. guys so updated weather report is the rain has passed so instead of messing with that engine and the pump gear we have decided to switch gears and go for you know continuing with the first gen because ultimately short-term goal that is this project is the one that needs to get done so we got this other support piece off here other support we got off yesterday uh, we actually, I forgot we need to trim that one up and then we can pretty much get to 
drilling some holes and seeing what we're going to want to do with the support tabs. Uh, originally, I said we were going to try and uh, get these original ones off and then get the intercooler, which was over here, which is not today, but uh, move these, basically take these whole assemblies off, move them to where we needed them, and then mock them up and then re-weld them basically right here wherever they were needed. But they are welded on the inside here and then on the inside here. Probably not the easiest thing to try and grind and save. I'm not exactly sure. These probably can be remade in some way, shape, and form with uh, some angle iron. Um, so we might actually redo that. I'm not, I'm not sure on that. We're not there yet. Uh, I'm just thinking out loud, letting you guys give me some feedback. So uh, probably what we'll do next is lop that off and see if maybe we can see where the holes are going to be somewhere in this area. Well, guys and girls, just another way to know that the summer is coming to a close. It is now 8 o'clock, losing daylight, whereas 9, 9.30 we had daylight till, but losing light, and I was hoping to get these holes cut. Did some more mock-up on where the intercooler pipe is going to land. Uh, it's actually kind of funny because I'll show you guys in a little bit here that pipe actually makes a bend So I got to account for that bend in the pipe uh, Not only just where the outlet the outlet is pretty much right in here The bend in that pipe that kind of comes like this and then goes over it's kind of out here So did a little bit more mock-up with the actual intercooler on here trying to account for that It looks like I can fit a bigger hole saw than I originally had bought so unfortunately no holes tonight we will continue with this hopefully tomorrow, same on the other side. Just gonna try and fit as big of a hole saw in between this section as I can. Bought the wrong size, so that will wait for tomorrow. Daylight always helps, even though it still looks like it's about five o'clock in the camera. But anyway, progress for tonight. Dinner bell is ringing, shower is calling my name. And that is gonna do it for this video, guys. So another solid day of wrenching out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe. See you guys tomorrow. See ya. Oh yeah. When Allie kills the wife game.